Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. As we continue on once again in our study of Paul's second letter to his son in the faith, Timothy. Uh, we've been in chapter 3 for a while. We may be there for a while yet. <laughs> There's a lot in there. Well, there certainly is a lot to cover. Every word matters. Right. Every don't, word. don't ever let anybody tell you that words don't matter. Every dot and tittle. Yes, because all Scripture is God-breathed. It means it's life-bringing. It's profitable for correction, for reproof, for training in righteousness. Amen. Every word Every is profitable. Word. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So as I said, we're continuing on. We're going to we'll start. I think we're in, uh, let's see, verse 3. Yeah, we finished verse 2 last week, so we're going to start on yes, 2 Timothy 3, and we're going to start reading in each word in, in verse 3. But before we do that, I'm going to ask Alice to pray and ask God's blessing on our time together. Father, we do. We come before you with praise in our hearts, thanksgiving on our lips. Amen. And we ask you, Lord, to just guide and direct us, give us understanding in what you want us to know. And Lord, don't let anything come out of our mouths that isn't from you. Amen. And we just thank you for all that you do for us. Amen. 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 Um, we're doing this very slow, and as I say, because each, every word truly is important. important. Yes. But the study is up and will remain up, so you can go back and listen to it and uh, Anytime. We're not going to take it down when we're through with this study. We have many, many studies that are already up. We, I want to encourage you, because of the importance of the Word, mm -hmm. that you have not only a Bible handy, which is a good thing for a Bible study, but maybe a notepad or something that you can write down, jot down notes if something strikes you, mm -hmm. uh, and, that you want to, and you can write to us anytime you want at office at BibleTalk.com with any questions or comments, any suggestions you have. Right. And if you have any prayers, you can reach us at prayer at BibleTalk.com. Yes, you can. We have a faithful prayer team. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, okay, so as I said, we're in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me read verse 2 again, which is what we did in our last session. Right. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful and unholy. So now we're going to start in verse 3. Unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good. And just for your information, I'm, I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. And a lot I reference here is the New King James. Because of the importance of every single mm -hmm. word, Amen. please be prayerful about the translations that you use. So okay? important. So important. Because as Jeremiah warned against the lying pen of the scribes, mm -hmm. there are some translations out there that are just not, not true, not true, not faithful to the original what God said. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You need to hear what God said. I'm not. We're not doing this so you can hear what I have to say no. or what we're others here, think. Yeah. That or what God other should have said. Right. right. Exactly. So I mean, we're here to look at what God has said. Mm -hmm. All right. Unloving. But you know what? We've been doing this for a couple of weeks, so I want to first of all look at, if I can turn my page here, which I'm having no success doing, because it's interesting. There's a good time for to see the relationship of these characteristics, and that's what they are, the characteristics mm -hmm. of people in the perilous last days. But the, to Paul's inspired words in his letter to the Romans. Yes. Okay? So now if you have your Bible, give me a favor, just, you know, keep your Bible there in Second Timothy and, and mm -hmm. read, watch as I say this. I'm starting in uh, chapter 1, verse 21, of Paul's letter to the Romans. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks. But they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And then going on to verse 24, it says, Therefore God gave them over. What did he give them over to? To impurity, right? Mm -hmm. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, 
and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. That's homosexuality. Go read it. Romans chapter 1. And then in verse 28, he continues, And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, holding to a form of godliness, right? God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, lovers of self over mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. right? Evil, haters of good over here. Full of envy, boastful over here. Murder, strife, deceit, malice, they're gossips. Slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful. Those are all words that are here in Second Timothy, right? Yes. Inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. It's all there. It's, but, but you know, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, witnesses every right. word is confirmed. What, what's said here in his letter to Timothy is what he has said in his letter to the Romans. And all scripture attests to the truth of these things, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But one of the other things I want you to see by looking at what Paul wrote to the Romans in that first century mm -hmm. was that the problem does not start in the last days, but has been building, yes. growing in the church for a long time. It's no wonder that homosexuality is so rampant, both in and outside the church in our world today. And I'll let you know when I use the word church and put a small C there, which is there, okay? All right, so we left off, as I said, in the last session looking at unholy. The next one is unloving. Now, the King James says, without natural affection, mm -hmm. okay? Because this is, that's what the kind of love that uh, he's talking about here. So the, the Greek word that's used here, astorogos, I think is the way it's pronounced in Greek, does not speak to the issue of God's love in us or for us, but rather just normal human affection. Mm -hmm. And in this case, a total lack of it. Lack of it. Right. Okay? They don't have any affection. The reason is that this love would compete with Love of self. Mm -hmm. When it's people consumed. are so they're filled, totally they're consumed, consumed with, with love of self. Yeah. There's no room for love of, or even affection for anybody, anybody else, else, right? right. Mm -hmm. The unloving person is only concerned with what he or she gets from others, right. whereas true love is it's indeed giving. about giving. And if you don't believe that, go read John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. yes. You'll see what love is, right? And beware, because, you know, the enemy plans and plots against us. Mm. Jesus said that in the perilous last days, he said this in Matthew 24, verse 12, because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. That's why Satan is, you know, he, he, he is always plotting. But in Isaiah, God said, you know, said to him, devise a plan, but it'll be thwarted. Okay? Yes. But don't depend on your love, your natural affection, or else you could never obey Jesus' teaching from the Sermon on the Mount when he said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Matthew 5, 43 and 45. Okay, that's, that's what we're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Not lovers of self, not lacking affection, I mean, right. but having this love of God that's, well, how can you do it? How can you have that kind of love that you love your enemies? It's easy. Because, it says in Romans 5, 5, the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Proverbs 5.5. 5, Proverbs, Romans 5.5. 5. Mm -hmm. It's in us. <clears throat> that love, the same love that was in Jesus Christ, is in us. Okay? So the next word is irreconcilable. Now the King James there uses the word truth breakers. <laughs> mm. Now, irreconcilable, the dictionary says that's a person 
or a thing that's implacably hostile, incapable of being brought into harmony. Right? That's what you're mm -hmm. right. You can't, you can't be brought into yes. harmony. Yeah. But now the Word of God says, God spoke through the Apostle Peter, 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9, and he said, to sum up, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil, or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called with the very for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. Mm. So let there be no division among you. That's what Paul wrote, right, to the believers in Corinth. And it's it's not if it's not an issue of believing in the same gospel, because we have to believe in the same gospel, yes. okay? Yeah. Because, you know, Paul wrote in the second letter to the Corinthians, he said, if, if somebody comes along and preaches a different, different gospel, gospel, let them be accursed, all right? But if it's not a matter of the gospel, well, you may not you may not agree with what they're doing. You may feel the same way. But if it's not about the gospel truth, live with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it says some people they want vegetables. Some people want meat. Now, I'm yeah. a carnivore for sure, I, you know. If you're a vegetarian, can you still manage to love me? <laughs> okay, don't don't, don't let, let a vegetable cause irreconcilable. Yeah. Don't <laughs> let the things that are unimportant or not really important divide us. Come between us. Right. Harmony doesn't mean you know if you're playing a piano, if you're playing a keyboard. Harmony doesn't mean that we're all playing the same note. No, but it means that the note that you play yes. and the note I play had better yeah. come together. And sound, make a beautiful sound, all right? And the other thing is that we are all, those who are saved, have a ministry of reconciliation. Absolutely, absolutely. So we are reconcilable. Yes. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's not a matter of liking what a brother or sister is doing. And it's certainly not an issue of agreeing with what they may be doing. Again, if it's not about the basics of the true gospel, right? right? It's a matter of... Jesus' will, right? His prayer in the garden, John 17, 21, he prayed that we would all be one. And that's his command for his children, for his children, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It says, in, I'm going to go back to 1 Peter again. 1 Peter, right? Chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. Again, to sum up, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil. Okay. These are the same things. I mean, we, we, we have to let not let division come and take place. Mm -hmm. The church is rampant with division. Oh, my goodness. What a, the only hope we have, and I mean this sincerely, the, to overcome division doesn't mean that Lutherans and Catholics get together. Yeah. It means that denominationalism fades away because there's only one name given by which men can be saved. We have to have that kind of unity, that it's all about Christ in our lives. It's not about what church you go to, because there's only one church, there's only one body. But it says, because if you're dealing with somebody, if you're saved, I need to find a way to have be in harmony with you. Right. But if you're not, if you, you know, if you're not saved, well, what Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians mm -hmm. 6.14 was, do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? Okay, you can't reconcile and come together and be in agreement with a non-believer. Okay, you, I mean, you're just, you're in two different worlds. That's unequally yoked. That's being unequally yoked, right? You have to be willing to give them the good news and the love of the Lord. You have to love them with the mm -hmm. love of the Lord. But remember, you can't walk with them in agreement. Yeah. Why not? Because God spoke through the prophet Amos, Amos 3.3, 3, and he said, can two walk together unless, and except they be agreed? Mm -hmm. Please don't be agreed with the unsaved. No. Okay? Love them. Bring the love of God to them. Mm -hmm. But you can't be in agreement with them. Okay? All right. The next phrase is malicious gossips. Oh. Now, malicious gossips, the King James says false accusers. Mm -hmm. They're speaking evil. 
about someone. In Proverbs chapter 6, starting at verse 16, which is where God says, there, there are six things that the Lord hates, even yea, even seven that are an abomination to him. Mm -hmm. An abomination to God, all right? Where he shows, I mean, this is where he shows the things that are truly abominable to him, right? Mm -hmm. Something that should jump out at us as we consider these words of Paul is this. In Proverbs 6.19, it said, this is one of those things. Mm -hmm. A false witness who utter lies and one who spreads strife among brothers. That's one of the things that mm -hmm. God says is an abomination. abomination. Is that not gossip? Yes, absolutely. And of course it is. It's, it's being a malicious gossip. And yes. remember, malicious means to bring badness, to bring right. evil upon somebody, mm -hmm. right? You know, Alice and I, we, we started a couple of Christian schools. And I used to tell, because I, I, as the pastor of the church, mm -hmm. even though we had a principal, I used to do uh, devotions and, and stuff with the, with the children. And I would tell them, you need to understand that it is as evil, and believe me, it's evil to yes. bring gossip. But it's equally evil to receive yes. gossip. Mm -hmm. It's like being a sewer sucker. Yeah. Like taking a straw to the sewer. Well, because you're receiving filth. Right. Yeah. And, and if it's an abomination, right? So the, Lord. the righteous are as bold as a lion. Don't be afraid, speaking the truth in love, to say to somebody, I don't want to hear that. Right. Just tell them, I don't want to hear that. I, 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 you know, if that's, a, if that's the truth, if, that, if this person's having that problem, what are you doing about it? Because there's a rule to this, all right? The rule is this. If you see a brother or sister mm -hmm. who's sinning against you, right? Go to them and them alone and tell them what they've done. Mm -hmm. Right? This is what Jesus said now in Matthew 18. I'm reading from verses 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two more with you so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. That's the rule. Now, the next rule is don't talk to anyone about another person if you have no authority to deal with the situation. Exactly. Or unless you be directly mm -hmm. harmed, right? Mm -hmm. If they're not in a place to fix it, why would you talk to people about it? Okay. What, what purpose? What, what good purpose? purpose is there in that? What? Why would you do that? Yeah. This is why. I mean, if you see if you see somebody sinning, go talk to them. Get them alone and talk to them, and bring them the word of truth, the the love of God, speaking the truth in love. Why? Because you want to bring good. You want to bring healing. You don't want to bring evil. That's that's mm -hmm. when you get into doing malicious stuff, right? If it, you know, if you think about it, like with children, I mean, that's what we are. We're children of God. And if a parent sees their child sinning, yes. doing something wrong, he's not going to go tell the neighbor, "Hey, did you see what my kid just did?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And by the same token, because that, that's this is a good example. If if you see, I'm, I'm going to use the word a child, but a child, you know can be somebody who's 18, 19. Exactly. If you see them sinning, unless you feel led of the Lord to go and talk to them alone. If they're adult enough, then yes, go talk to them. Right. And if, they're, if they're not adult enough, go talk to the parents. The parents. It is not gossip no, to speak to the parents, parents about it. Because they because, have authority. Because they have authority to deal with it. Right. Okay? Right. But if they don't go tell the neighbor, mm. they have no authority to deal with it. Yeah. How, what can they do about it? Exactly. Right? You've got to get this because... Gossip is utterly, utterly destructive. So totally And if you don't see that, think about what it says, what Solomon said in his wisdom mm -hmm. in Proverbs 12, 18. He said, there is one who speaks rashly, like the thrusts of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Okay? We have to seek to bring healing, speaking the truth in love. Okay? Moving right along now. The next one is without self-control. Remember, these are the characteristics of people inside and outside the church, small c, mm -hmm. in the perilous last days, without self-control. The King James says incontinent, but incontinent is defined as lacking in self-control, right? Right, right. So, 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Now Strong's definitions says that that refers, that word that's used here, refers to being powerless. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have no, it's like you have no control, you have no power over your own self, right? And that's what it's about, having power over your own self. Paul had earlier written to Timothy at the start of this letter and said, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and discipline. 2 Timothy 1.7. God has given us the power. Amen. He's given it to us. He equips us. Every believer who is filled with the spirit has the power to take thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. You have that power. And by the way, you, every behavior starts with a thought. Yes. Okay. The angel, God sent an angel to Zerubbabel in the, in, uh, in the book of Zechariah. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, Zechariah 4, 6. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the spirit is the work of the spirit. All we have to do is submit and make sure we don't quench the spirit, which is what Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, right? First Thessalonians yeah. 5, 19. So we have to not quench the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit gives us the power to control ourselves. You know, let's go back to Paul a minute here. Because Before Paul, you do that, on the... The fruit of the Spirit. I don't know if you mentioned patience. Well, I don't want to get too off Alice. The fruit of the Spirit. I did mention patience. Did you? Okay. Yes, I did. I didn't hear it. Sorry. Okay. Okay, Galatians 5, 16. Paul said, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit and you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you better get together with somebody and find out why and pray and seek that you be filled with the Holy Spirit because you need this power in your life. Absolutely. Right? You, can't, you can't do anything without it. Because this is the constant conflict that goes on in our lives is between the flesh and the it's Spirit. Mm -hmm. right? And he's saying in the last days, people don't have any self-control. They don't have the power over their own flesh. They give in to every whim. They give in to every desire. Right, wrong, or in there. I mean, you know, they just, they're constantly suiting themselves. Don't do that. And then the next word that's used here is brutal. King James says fierce. Well, whether you're talking about brutal or fierce, brutal, that's without mercy, without love. And given the times that we live in, those words immediately brought to my mind ISIS terrorists. Mm. I mean, you know, they, it's been seen over and over and over that there's utter brutality. There's no mercy. There's no compassion, right? right. Well, the crimes that are going on today are brutal. Yeah, they are. It's but, not just a, you know, a, a mugging or, or but it, I mean, they're brutal. But I got to understand what brutality is. Yeah. Brutality is without any mercy. Right. right. There's no love. There's no mercy. That's what makes it brutal, okay? Mm -hmm. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, John 16, verses 2 and 3, But an hour is coming for everyone who kills you to think that he's offering service to God. These things they will do because they have not known the Father or me. That's why ISIS can be so brutal. But religion, as practiced by the world... And all too often over the centuries, the church, the so-called church, has brutally and fiercely persecuted those who would dare, dare challenge their organizations. Yes, yes. I mean, think of the Crusades. Think of the, the, the Inquisition. Mm. I mean, you want to talk about brutality. You want to talk about no compassion. And don't, uh, it wasn't love that generated that. I'll tell you what. So... We have to get to that place where we have that love of God in us, working in us, working through us. We are ca called to follow the teaching and the example of Jesus, 
who is more brutally treated than any other human being or any other person Absolutely. who ever lived on the walked on the face of the earth. Remember, he was sinless. While he had no power to re while he had the power rather yes. to respond with force. Mm -hmm. He said he could have called on the Father to send twelve legions of angels to rescue him. But he chose But he didn't, did he? Mm -hmm. He chose not to. He rather he chose to return love for hate and good for evil. Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. So that said, here, Paul writing to Timothy reminds him, don't expect righteous behavior from unrighteous people. That's what he's saying. Which leads to, or is caused by, the next item on the list, which is people being haters of good. And I think the, the King James is, is more accurate when it says, despisers of those who that are good. Right. Okay. Why would anybody hate people who are good? Because the righteous, us, right. simply by our presence, bringing the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus into every place, will either encourage the not good right. to repent and change their ways, or those haters of good will choose to understand the Lord's pro presence as condemnation. Right. Which it's not, mm. right? No. And strike out in anger. They are, after all, lovers of self, just the way they are. Everything that is good stands against everything that is evil. More often not, than not, the evil ones will not be passive, but rather, like a serpent, they will strike out. The serpent comes to kill. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what it says? Yes. Jesus said in John 10 10. Mm -hmm. So, the next one is uh, treacherous and traitors. Now, we'll see if we can get into this. Because it's written that Judas Iscariot became a traitor. That's what it says in Luke 6, 1, 6, 6, 16, right? I believe, as many of you, I'm sure, do, that you can't lose your salvation. Yeah. However, I also believe that you can give it up. Yes. You can become a traitor or a deserter. Mm -hmm. When... When Jesus taught hard truth, as in the case of him being the bread of life, right? Mm -hmm. It's written in the Gospel of John in the sixth chapter. Mm -hmm. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a difficult statement. Who can listen to it? As a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. That's verses mm -hmm. 60 and 66 in John chapter 6. When his word became too difficult, too difficult for them, that's right. what they thought. They became deserters. They were traitors. They walked away. The most treacherous enemies of the church are the fallen away. Right. They're, I'm telling yes, you. Yes. The ones who have chosen apostasy, they become venomous like serpents. Oh, because well, they've made we've a been choice. Through it. That's, um, I'm sure we've run out of time again. Yeah. So, wow. so okay. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. Thank we you, we Jesus. thank you that you have given us your word to equip us, to train us, to make us ready for what's coming, Lord God. Lord, I, I pray that we would just abide in your word, be filled with it, that we would speak your word, your truth in love to everybody we meet, Lord God, that we would be faithful witnesses of your love and power. We praise you and thank you, Lord, that you can use us, the yes. foolish, thank you. The, the weak, Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Well, yeah. until next week, God bless you and goodbye. It's been nice to be with you. Write to us at officeatbibletalk.com. Yes. Bye-bye. Oh uh...